So this idea of resources, events, and agent is a nice idea. What's my experience with it? Well, I've been working with it for 30 years now, and, and there's there's one thing that I've noted. It, it's not used in, in a lot of new implementations because there's some impractical aspects to it. The most significant impractical aspect to it is that the cost of producing financial summaries from tra transactions is very high. The computers are very sensitive to transaction volumes. Uh, the, the more things that a computer has to do on each transaction, the longer it takes for the computer to accomplish what's needed. You might have seen this yourself in your own work. If you've ever worked with a, an Excel spreadsheet in you know, days gone by when it was measured in tens of thousands of rows, it was very large. Today, with today's computers, you can get to 100,000 rows and still be able to do some things with it. But at some point, um, your computer will slow down as you as you try to do something with that, the, the recalculation process. The reason you can turn off calculation in Excel is because it becomes so slow that each time you hit enter, the computer has to do a whole bunch of work to recalculate where things are. And so you would turn that off. And when you finally get something to the right point, you do that once and you, you can end up waiting for a minute or two for the computer to recalculate in Excel what the position is. Well. So imagine that in our Excel file, we just continue to add rows of data of new transactions over time. And we've been in business now for a couple of years. Uh, every time you go and add new rows to the data and you want to calculate what is my financial position, what's my net income, what's my inventory position, the Excel does not keep a balance somewhere it recalculates from the transactions in that spreadsheet, clear from top to bottom. And so you you make it, you enter a transaction, push recalc, and it runs for two minutes to calculate your your position in cash, for example. Then a moment later, you have another transaction, so you add a new transaction. When you push calc again, Excel is going to do all of the work it did a minute ago on the prior transaction to get back to that position and then add one more transaction to that. That's pretty inefficient because you're using the computer to recalculate for things that you've already calculated. Because our compute capacity is very expensive, it's always been that way. When it was in a manual world, the you know clerk with the green eye shade sitting at the table he was a very expensive person because he didn't produce anything for the firm. All he did was keep track of a bunch of numbers. And if he had to go back and recalculate things from prior days, it would have just been outrageously expensive. So how do we deal with that? Well, what you do is you create a balance as of the last day, typically, maybe the last month and days gone by. Then you take the transactions for this day and you add to you add them to the balance from yesterday to make a new balance then tomorrow you take that balance record and you add to it new transactions that make a new balance for tomorrow the the balance that's created stores the accumulated effort from the clerk to calculate the position as of the point in time um, and that's true even in the early days of computing because computers were so expensive. Someone recently suggested to me that, that my iPhone, uh, if I had purchased, tried to purchase the iPhone in 1991, that the iPhone would, might have, that specific iPhone might have cost me $3.4 million. The memory alone would have been $1.4 million. It's a reflection of the declining cost of computing over time. But even when we had those early days in 1991, in 1970s, 1980s, early 2000s, computing was still much more expensive than it is today. And so even though it was less expensive than the clerk sitting at a table right, 
doing things. It was expensive enough that it was worth our time to make these balances and roll balances forward over time. The balances storing the prior compute cost that, that we've executed and needed to create. Well, that process of creating balances is something that's a little bit closer to what the financial systems have historically done. Because when you make a balance, you predetermine what you're going to store in the balance. You can't create a balance based upon all the attributes of a transaction. It just, there's no aggregation that happens. You have to pick certain attributes that you're going to drop from the transaction record that you're not going to store in the balance. And the more attributes you, you drop, the fewer things you record, the less, the fewer number of balances you create. If you go to the highest level of aggregation, the, the most targeted to a specific question, if you wanted to know, for example, um, a specific customer balance, you don't care about when, you don't care about the products, you don't care about any of that. All you're going to do is you can aggregate on the customer ID, then you'll end up with a single record. The most targeted answer for your question will be a single record, a single balance that, that tells you that. Now that, that balance only answers one question. It only answers the question about the customer balance. It doesn't tell you anything about products. It doesn't tell you anything about locations. It doesn't tell you anything about any other agents. It doesn't tell you anything about resources. Balances answer specific questions. So balances are useful for us in creating systems and storing the, the, the accumulated work, but they're, they're not very useful for us in flexible reporting processes. What I've done through the course of my career is I've worked on systems where we create balances, but we create balances at a much lower level of granularity. So you might take a thousand transactions and create a single balance, but that balance still tells you about all the resources, agents involved, and the location involved. It just is taking out like timestamps from specific times of transactions. That process of creating lower level, more detailed balances increases the flexibility of our reporting process. We're still using balances as opposed to transactions, but we're using such detailed balances that it now fits within the computing capacity we have today, which is much greater than the computing capacity we've had in days gone by. That process of using those balances and creating those balances then opens up measurements that go beyond the traditional accounting view of the world to other kinds of views, other possible views of data.